Hi guys, are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. These two cars are the quintessential compact sedans in the market and they really don't need any introduction because both of these are very strong sedans. Now, the Amaze is really like a miniature version of the Honda City while the Desire is like a miniature version of the Siaz. Is this the correct statement to make? I'll let you know in this video review and also tell you which one is better in which sense and which department is this one better over the Desire and which department is the Desire better over the Honda Maze. So let's get started. Well, so yeah, I'm inside the cabin of the Amaze. Now, the good point about this car's cabin is the fact that uh, the cabin feels a lot more airy and a lot more brighter than the one on the Desire. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because of the design. Because overall, this car, just like the uh, Desire, also uses uh, black and beige elements. So, uh, that is something there. But it does feel a lot more airier and slightly more uh, roomier than that car's cabin. In terms of design, well, uh, it's all quite okay. There's no standout feature as such. I prefer the design language of the Desire. Which one do you prefer? You can let me know. In terms of seat comfort, uh, the seats are quite decent. The cushioning is decent. The support for your lower back could have been a little better. But it is quite okay. It is at par with its other cars in this segment. So, no real complaints. You have a couple of beverage holders here. One tray away where you can keep your cell phone wallet or you can keep some uh, coins. And if you have a kid at home, like I do, sometimes you might find uh, some McDonald's chips also, but I really shouldn't need them right now. So that's something which is there. In terms of the glove box, it's a much bigger glove box than the one on the Desire. And the door bins are also large enough to house those one liter bottles. The quality in both these cars is really neck and neck. Now this is the top of the line version. So you get a touchscreen system on this car. It come with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So that's a bit of a surprise. But overall, I would think that both these cars are really neck and neck when it comes to the front seat department. Now let's see which one has the advantage in the back seat. Well, same in the back seat of the Amaze. Now, in terms of legroom, it's more or less the same when you compare it with that car. But the good point about this car is that the front seats have been raised, unlike the design, which haven't uh, got such raised seats. So you can easily stretch your legs and really feel like the boss. In fact, in terms of space, this car really does feel like a miniature version of the City. And it's uh, by far the best car in this segment for sheer space in the back seat. What's even better is that support for your under thighs is very good. Support for your lower back is very good. The backrest angle is absolutely spot on. The only bit of negative is that the headrests here are fixed and I think Honda should now offer headrests which can be adjusted. So that's a bit of a letdown. But other than that, it is a very good place to be. You also get an armrest which you can pull out and you also get these small uh, places where you can keep those papers and files and maybe even a small bottle. The only small negative is that there aren't any AC vents like the Desire. But to be honest, the AC vents on the Desire are really ornamental and don't have such a strong throw of air. Instead, what you do get is a 12 volt charging point. What also makes the back seat of the Amaze better than the Desire is the fact that the windows are much larger and the opening aperture is also bigger than the one on the Desire. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that for sheer back seat space and comfort, this is the better car. Not only is it more spacious, it feels wider and the floorboard also is much flatter than it is in the Desire. Full marks to Honda for giving the MA such nice and sumptuous seats. Well, the first thing that you'll truly appreciate about the Desire's cabin are the front seats. The seats are the best in the business, not only compared to the Amaze, but all its other rivals. They offer you great support for your under thighs, great support for your lower back, and overall the cushioning is just supreme. Now, this particular car is the VXI version that I'm driving today, it's not the ZXI. So you don't get that fancy touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and an Auto, which you get on the ZXI version. But even this one is decent to operate. It's uh, got these manual buttons over here, which you can use. There's no reverse parking camera, but as standard right across the desire range, you get two airbags and ABS as standard. And uh, you also get air conditioning as standard as well as power windows over here. So that's something which is there. Now, in terms of the design, the appeal of the Desire's uh, gauges is definitely better than the one on the Amaze. And the cabin dashboard and design is definitely more youthful and a lot more energetic in terms of the look and feel. And that's because this one borrows heavily. In fact, it's the same one that is there on the Swift. So it's the same dashboard, the same panels and the same fit and finish. The only difference is the color choice. You get black, beige and a little bit of forward over here, unlike the Swift, which is all black. 
Now, in terms of ambience, appeal, and comfort, I think the desire is ahead of the Amaze. But what do you think? You can let me know by clicking on this pop up banner and voting. And now we'll jump in the back seat and see which one is better. Well, so here I'm in the back seat of the design. Now, in isolation, you get good knee room, you get good headroom. And even if you're about 5'10, 5, 5'11, 5, someone like me, you'll be quite okay in terms of the space at the back. In terms of the ultimate back seat experience, I think uh, the MA still has the advantage because the MA just feels a little more wider than this car does. So that car feels better for three occupants on a long journey. But in isolation, the desire also is in a bad place. You get good cushioning and good support for your back as well as your under thighs. Now let's see how big the boot on this car is and which one wins the comparison of the boot. But for the backseat experience, the Amaze has the advantage. Well, the boot on the Amaze is a huge and massive 420 liters and it's massive when you consider the size and the compact dimensions of this car. So in that sense, it's a good boot. It's bigger than the boot on the Desire and it's also quite a deep and spacious boot. You get uh, small indents over here where you can check in those bags and accommodate those big golf uh, kits. So overall, what I'm trying to say is that this car's boot is the winner not only of this comparison, but it's the best boot in this segment. Well, just like the Desire, this car also comes with a 1.2 litre petrol engine. And today we'll only talk about the petrols, not the diesel, because the Desire will no longer be sold with the diesel engine from April onwards. So let's just focus on the petrols. The good point about the Amaze is its overall ride comfort. Now, the Amaze is definitely ahead of the Desire in terms of overall ride. Not only does it offer you uh, a more comfortable ride in city, but also on the highway, it offers you a pliant ride. And uh, the engineers at Honda have done a good job with the tuning of the suspension. It does soak up the bumps quite well. So no matter what kind of surface you're driving on, you might be going over some rumble strips or you might be going over those badly passive roads. This car does soak in those bumps quite well. Now, in terms of driving dynamics, both these cars are quite decent and they are quite similar. The Amaze though doesn't have that same uh, kind of seat of your pants kind of feel. It can't be termed as the ultimate uh, driver's car in this segment. That is something that you can't call it. That is something that uh, the Desire does slightly better. Now the gearbox on the Amaze is a typical Japanese unit. It's really crisp, it has very short throws and uh, it's very accurate as well. In fact, both these cars are very similar in the gearbox department. You can't really choose which one is better. Now the steering wheel on this car is quite nice and light for daily transportation, but it's not so light that you start feeling nervous on the highway unlike the one on the Desire, which really does tend to become overtly light. So this one has uh, the better weight distribution. And uh, if you are someone who drives a lot on the highway, then you'll probably prefer this one because uh, it has some amount of weight in it, unlike the Desire, which really does feel overtly light and doesn't feel very communicative at faster speeds. In terms of engine responsiveness, even though it's an IV Tech engine, it just can't match the KC engine and the responsiveness and sheer uh, refinement that uh, the engine of the Desire offers. So that's one area where the Desire has a big advantage. So that's one area where the Desire has a big advantage. In terms of visibility, this car is definitely ahead. The mirror here is quite chunky and the view from this window also is quite good. So yes, that's one area where this car clearly has the advantage. Well, so here I am driving the 1.2 K series engine Desire. Now, in terms of outright power, both these cars are neck and neck, but the difference is not in the power output, but in the way that power is generated. This one is a very responsive engine. In fact, not only is it better than the Amazon engine, it is better and best engine in this segment. It triumphs over all its other rivals in this segment for sheer responsiveness for sheer quietness and also, of course, Maruti, so for sheer fuel economy. This is a car which belongs to a friend of mine and he's been in it for almost a year now and he's getting figures in excess of uh, 15 kpl on a regular basis driving in the city. Of course, uh, that can drop a bit if you use the AC a lot, but yes, 15 kpl in the winter isn't bad and uh, truly shows you the kind of attention that Maruti gives to fuel economy. Uh, what's also nice about this car is the fact that all the controls are nice and light. The clutch is light, the gearbox is light and uh, the steering wheel is light. So it's a very good car 
for people who drive a lot in the city. And uh, what's more about the gearbox is that it's a very accurate gearbox. It uses very short throws and uh, that's something that you will truly appreciate. Now in terms of overall ride comfort, both these cars are neck and neck when you uh, consider the city travel. But on the highway, this car definitely is slightly behind the TMAs. Yes, the TMAs have the advantage for highway travel because the steering wheel is light so you start feeling a little nervous sometimes. But that's not all. Uh, when you're driving on the highway, uh, the car does seem to uh, you know allow some of those bumps and portals to enter at faster speeds. So that's something which the Amaze handles slightly better than the Desire. But overall, it really is neck and neck. Well, so overall, both these cars really have very good strengths as well as their own unique characteristics. The Amaze is the ideal car for you in the compact sedan space if you want the best backseat in the business and you want the biggest boot. It's also a very refined car and it has very good ride comfort as well. That said, if you want slightly better fuel economy, then the Desire really is uh, the better car. And the 1.2 KC range on this car is definitely the benchmark in this segment when it comes to overall drivability as well as overall fun factor and an engaging drive as well. So it really is between choosing a car which is driver focused and choosing a car which is on the side of comfort with better space in the back seat. So both these cars, as I just said, are great uh, choices and you can't go wrong with either one of them. I'll give both these cars uh, a tie and really it depends on what you're looking at.